So how about you? What are your, uh, what are your, What's outside my... of your pop-up uh, power socket, what are your... <laughs> A man can dream, right? Uh, what What is my uh, high level? Okay, um, I similar to you, I want to get more reliability. I think. Um, yeah. So right now, I've everyone will probably be following my journey with these FP1 sensors. So I've got the Xiaomi FP1 yes. sensors around the house. Like they are awesome. I love them. Um, they're great ninety five percent of the time. It's the 5% mm-hmm. that I need to work on. Um, so for whatever reason, they uh, will not uh, change their status to the room being cleared. So therefore, lights stay on and the and home assistant assumes that someone is still in the room. Um, right. That also means that if you manually turn the light off at the switch and you walk back into the room because the room's already occupied, um, the lights don't turn on for you. And it just... It's it's jarring, right? Like it, it it's frustrating because uh, then you, the, the counter argument to is why don't you just use a light switch, right? Well, I don't want to have to use a light switch. Um, and that's right. So I want to, yeah. So currently, I and the only way to get them to start reporting again, I found is to physically unplug the USB cable and plug it back <sighs> in. That's um, annoying. yeah. So I'm doing a bit of a MacGyver at the moment. I uh, purchased some Sonoff USB power, smart relay mm-hmm. USB powers things. Um, yep. They integrate with the local to your integration. So I'm going to try and just power cycle those FP1 sensors. Um, I have an automation set up in my daughter's room that if it's during the day um, and it's, the room has been detected for more than 30 minutes, um, Home Assistant actually has a reset presence button in there. I'll just, yeah. you know, get an automation to trigger that. Um, yeah. I. They're all, as I said, it's a MacGyver hacky. I don't want to have to do that, right? I don't want to have to uh, have automations to monitor the automations mm-hmm. to make sure everything's working correctly. So I want to yeah, add more reliability. I don't know how I get that at this stage. Um, so, so would you would you spend more money and get... Like let's let's say for example, there's a better answer to the FP1 in this case, right? Because yeah. th- this, to me, this just sounds like what you're doing is just compensating for for yep. something that's 100%. effectively wrong with the FP1 uh, in, yep. in this case. So would that mean you're gonna, you know, hey, great, I'm gonna, you know, let me get rid of this, and then there's something better out there. Let me plug that mm-hmm. in and see how that works. Would you would yeah. you replace it or like because reliability can be two things, right? One is you just like you said, MacGyver it and throw more <laughs> automations yep. at it, or the other one is just just kind of fix it. There's band aid and then there's there's rip and replace, right? It's funny. Um, I was actually just before this recording, I was on AliExpress looking for other options to the FP one. Yeah. Um, you actually yeah. sent me one uh, a couple of months ago, um, yeah. which I started looking at. Uh, Black Adder has done. Um, I hope a review on the one that you sent me um, mm. that came out pretty good. So yeah, there is a, an alternative uh, microwave MM wave uh, presence sensor that I could use. Um, I was also just reading a blog from the from Smart Home Scene um, to say that there is um, a uh, they did a comparison of the three M wave MM wave. Um, presence detections out there, the FP1, they actually had winning um, and a close second was the one you sent me. Uh, I'll have to get the model number and put it in the show notes. Um, yeah, but and, and Lewis at Everything Smart Home also has uh, has one that, that he's kind of designed as well. Yeah, which I think is uh, Wi-Fi ESP based from what yeah. I remember, which is, yeah, I won't go there. I've spoken about it enough. I, yeah, I don't want to introduce a Wi-Fi presence occupancy sensor at the moment. I, I'd rather keep everything Zigbee goes away for the moment. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, that's my... Uh, do I might just... Because I've spent a lot of money on those FP1s, right? I don't want to throw mm. that money down the drain. Uh, yeah. Because I don't think I'd be able to recoup the... I'm not going to be able to sell them. Uh, See, so yeah, I might buy uh, another model just then put it in one room just to give a yep. like for like comparison before i roll it out otherwise yeah i don't know what my answer is maybe i do have to just bite the bullet and go to something like wi-fi but 
I'm not sure if it's Wi-Fi or Zigbee that's the issue here, um, which is mm-hmm. the sensor itself. Maybe it's the technology. It's a bit immature that is causing these issues. I need to spend some time and work out what's going wrong. So that's the sort of – and that's what I would mean like by reliability, right? Same thing goes with my uh, Z-Wave network uh, for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh I mentioned on a couple of episodes ago, like it'll just freeze for a couple of minutes. I need to work out yeah. why that is. Um, do I need a new Z-Wave hardware? I don't know, but I want, yeah, reliability, right? I want my smart home to just yeah. be working. I don't want to have to open up the home. This is an app to say, all right, why isn't the lights working? This yeah, yeah, yeah. 